so let's talk about gi bleed gastrointestinal bleed you can easily classify this as can be upper gi bleed or lower one lower gi bleed so what is upper gi bleed anatomically everything above the ligament of traits in duodenum so if this is a ligament of traits if anything above it above this ligament injured that will be upper below ligament of traits below ligament of traits it will be lower gi bleed and remember in upper gi bleed the blood will come in contact with hcl so they will form a pigment hematozoites so they will have melina black blood melina black in color because they are coming with hcl hematozoite pigment right here lower gi bleed you will be like bright red blood bright red blood we call it as hematochezia hematochezia there are different scenarios that will cause you upper gi bleed to include can be peptic ulcer disease can be varices can be cancer right ah it can be something called dual foi malformation that is arteriovenous malformation it can be varices varices right it can be something called ah uh, gerd gerd or remember bohr wave bohr wave syndrome or can be due to ah uh, mallory wave tear mallory wave tear so all this can be pod we already discussed remember about varices it occurs because of portal hypertension portal hypertension here also we do an endoscopy or like for diagnosing we can do endoscopy or biopsy right so if there is a varices you will have increased what portal pressure to decrease that we can give propanolol so propanolol can decrease the pressure portal pressure for varices we can do bandage or banding or like ballooning or we can do tips trans ah so trans jugular intrahepatic portal shunt to stop the bleeding this we can do so here also we can do an endoscopy and find it out now to stop the bleeding again we can use the drugs like ah uh, octotide or we can use somato somato statin right they can stop what bleeding next one about a uh, gerd we already discussed right about mallory weiss it's a superficial tear in superficial tear in esophagus right so remember that uh, shape of the tear will be longitudinal like a self limiting condition normally self limiting it will go by their own no need of any treatment you can give enough iv fluids iv fluids and observe the patient in severe cases only we have to do like surgical management but bohr heavy is little more important because they are transmural transmural mainly seen in alcoholics 
or in bulimic patient uh, bulimia bulimic patients here you will see air in mediastinum air in mediastinum now for diagnosing here also best one is endo right endoscopy plus biopsy is the best one but we can do something called gastro graphin so we can see exactly where is the tear happened right give them iv fluids and go for what treatment iv fluids and here it is a little complicated as i told you transmural so it can cause what infection so which one is more complicated here air in mediastinum the infection symptoms will be there fever will be also there comparatively malaria base is a light one dulf dl4 is it's like just a lesion in esophagus you will have painless bleeding right so like you will do it like surgically repair it so this all cause what type of bleed upper gi bleed now talking about lower gi bleed we have different causes that include hemorrhoids we will study in surgery hemorrhoids can be internal and external as you all know internal there will be no pain no pain but there will be bleeding bleeding external there will be pain but no bleeding or we can say patient will have blood in blood in toilet paper diagnosis is done by diagnosis by uh, digital or manual rectal examination you put your hand inside right the, then you do biopsy if you see any lesion or not treatment you do sits bath sits bath will study in uh, surgery or do what hemorrhoidectomy hemorrhoidectomy so one is hemorrhoid for lower gi bleed second one diverticula diverticula in aged patient more than 50 years you can see this arterial diverticula you will have painless painless bright red bleed from rectum bright red bleed here also diagnosis is done by colonoscopy colonoscopy and you do diverticular uh, diverticulectomy remove that diverticula surgery will be done so that is second reason for what lower gi bleed next one there is something called mesenteric ischemia it is related with what atherosclerosis atherosclerosis patient will have atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation pain while eating that pain will be so much out of proportion out of proportion then so mesenteric mesenteric arteries are affected so all the like so like for of vasculopathy diagnosis we do a ct angiography angiography right then there is ischemia no blood so we have to do what to reduce the pain revascularization last one among lower gi bleed example ischemic colitis it mainly affect watershed area watershed area in the colon region ischemic colitis right 
here it was painless blade it will be what painful painful bright red bleed here also do what colonoscopy for diagnosing treatment again like say surgeon's procedure right so these are the main examples of lower gi bleed so these are the main uh, like how you differentiate between right uh, upper gi bleed and lower gi bleed so once again briefing here if a patient comes with signs and symptoms of upper gi bleed you are you are a doctor you are suspecting he is having signs and symptoms of upper gi bleed so first thing you are doing is like uh, if someone have hypotension all the thing you go for abc airway everything first thing is stabilize the patient for stabilizing we will give iv fluids you will give them like ppi again iv ppi you can give then you can give them like the bleeding stopping drug as we have told octiotide tirotide then give an antibiotic to prevent the infection there that is that ceftriaxon and remember be set do the typing of the blood typing type the blood because in case if patient blood hemoglobin go less than 7 do what transfusion so what is the limit to do the transfusion the blood is less than 7 now don't do like nasogastric tube or lavage if once the patient is stabilized right like if you are suspecting still if you want to confirm you can do an endoscopy in endoscopy if you see it is upper gi bleed like manage accordingly if in endoscopy it is negative you suspect what it can be lower gi bleed because lower gi bleed we can't find in what endoscopy for finding the lower gi bleed we do what we find a the rate of bleeding how you find it by doing colonoscopy colonoscopy if you see in colonoscopy the there is a small bleeding that is called brisk bleeding or brisk bleeding do embolize embolize or right stop that bleeding if that a heavy bleeding increased bleed then do then do what tagged rbc scan we use here for tagging technetium 99 or you can even go for something called pill scan endoscopy pill scan sorry pill scan endoscopy to find out the rate of bleed so once again if it is lower gi bleed we have to find out the rate of bleeding do the colonoscopy in colonoscopy uh, if you see brisk bleeding do what embolization or stop the bleeding if like if you can't find out the bleeding properly you will do a tagged rbc scan using technetium 99 or you can even use what pill scan endoscopy pill scan endoscopy so that's all about lower gi bleed and upper gi bleed and how you like diagnose if a patient comes with what signs and symptoms of gi bleed thank you